Paleontology is the study of fossils, and it was the first scientific discipline that really enthralled me as a kid. I spent half my childhood exploring the quarries and beaches of southern England in search of fossils. Why? Because fossils are the key that unlocks the history of all life on Earth. And by understanding where we came from, perhaps we can better understand where we're going. Author, musician, meteorite hunter, adventurer. I've led an eventful life. Now I'm exploring exciting STEM careers and recording what I find in the STEM journals. Excellent. Thank you. Very important item here. Oh, hi, Svet. Hey, Jeff. I hear you're digging for dino bones in Wyoming? How did you know I was in Wyoming? Oh, people talk. Hey, so could you pick me up some stromatolites? Of course, I happen to know a guy who is a stromatolite guy in Rock Springs. They'd be really helpful for an experiment I'm doing over here at Arizona State. OK, thanks. <laughs> sure, you know, if you wouldn't mind just kind of picking up some multi-million year old stromatolites, you know, like when you're kind of hanging around doing anything else. Oh, of course, I just, you know, want them lying around all over the place. STEM journals, paleontology. Dave Freeman is an expert on stromatolites. He makes a living collecting, cutting, polishing, and selling these ancient fossils around the world. I'm one of only a handful of people he's invited to his secret location where we can collect samples for study at ASU. I must say I'm very impressed by your wilds of Wyoming. Isn't this a beautiful place? It's spectacular. So Dave, what, what's this land used for? What goes on out here? We have oil and gas development. We have beef cattle being raised out here. We have wildlife, antelope, deer, elk, wild horses. And what's this spectacular formation up here? This is the Cathedral Bluffs member of the Green River Eocene. I heard rumors that there might be some stromatolites out here. I have found them out here in the past. And if I was to find one, what would I be looking for? You'd be looking for laminations. Laminations. Lamin what is that? These are laminations. These are layers of mucus and silt to protect itself from the UV rays of the sun. So you're telling me that this is fossilized cyanobacteria spit? Jello. That is so disgusting. I'm going to lick it. Oh, it tastes horrible, too. Beautiful, though, it isn't is it? It is really nice to look at. And what about these guys? Are these yours? I found those a few years ago. What are the chances of finding one like this today, would you say? Not too good, probably. We might come across one or two, but it took me a long time to find these. Look, I'm on a mission for ASU. i got to find a really good one like this, not this broken garbage that's lying all over the place. One way to find out. Let's go over here to my secret spot and see if there's anything there. I can be very lucky. Follow me. You're going to take me to the most dangerous place, right? Yeah. I knew you were going to say that. Hey, Dave. What's going on? You find anything? I found a couple nice ones here. Jeff, come over here and look at this one. Oh, wow. That's unbelievable. That's possibly worthy of you taking. Yeah, I think so too. I think that's a yeah. keeper. Because that's got the beautiful got enough, shape of the head. It's got enough head shape to it to let you know what it is. And then it's got the brains inside. Fantastic. All right, buddy. Well, I got to hit the road. I got dinosaurs waiting for me. Pleasure to have you out. STEM Journal Supplemental. Excited doesn't even remotely come close to describing what I'm feeling right now. 
Here in the heart of dinosaur country, Wyoming, I will join paleontologists from the Sorier Museum in Switzerland to excavate a sauropod from the Jurassic period, roughly 150 million years old. Ah. Water. Water. Sauropods were herbivorous dinosaurs, and I like that. Maybe the Swiss team will teach me a few tricks so I can find dinosaur bones of my own. Room service? I needed right now. I'd come all the way from Rock Springs. I've been collecting stromatolites. They are 50 million years old. Right. I've seen yeah. much. Wow. Here we have 100 million year older sediments, even. Older. Upper Jurassic in age. We're digging dinosaurs here. There were huge streams coming from up north to the south. And the climate, it was not dry like this. It was humid. And dinosaurs were feeding in there. But sometimes the monsoons, they came too early or too immense, and they flooded the whole area. And because it was that damn flat, dinosaurs couldn't escape. Oh, they became trapped. Many of those dinosaurs could be floating away and were deposited maybe in oxbow lakes. What does a guy have to do to get to see that? Unfortunately, I have to tell you, you have to further walk on. I knew you were gonna say that. STEM Journal Supplemental. Thomas Bolliger and a team from the Sorier Museum in Switzerland have leased ranch land outside of Tensleep, Wyoming. For the last few years, they've slowly unearthed a mother load of fossilized dinosaur bones. Now, they face the painstaking process of carefully removing and preparing them for display. Thomas, this is the famous Morrison Formation where the great American paleontologists like Marsh and Cope and their colleagues found hundreds of new fossil types in the late 1800s. But how do you know that this is it? If you look over here, all this scattered land here is this yellowish, brownish, grayish land. That's Morrison Formation. And if you look over to that hill, you see those white and, and red layers. That's completely different formation. You do not have to look for dinosaurs. You have to take this particular formation looking for dinosaur bones. I understand now how you recognize the correct formation, but how did you know exactly where to dig for the dinosaur? scattered bone fragments you can find everywhere in the Morrison Formation on the surface. But sometimes you find huge accumulation of bone fragments and these places are exactly the places where you have to dig. So here you get quite an overview. This is just gigantic. Oh, looks I'm great, no... huh? This is a leg, leg yeah, bone? Yeah. Oh, look at that. What are you working on there? Let me see. That's beautiful. This is a claw. Sauropods had claws? Yes, they do. But the claw was not, not like this, you know, sticking down. It was sideways. And what would that be used for? It gave more stability. Look, I, I brought my pick. I'm, I'm ready to get to work and earn my keep here. Oh my God, you cannot use that one. That's much too rude, you know? Here, we have chisels. We have tiny chisels. We have even screwdrivers, not to damage the bones. When you work close to the bones, you cannot use such a pick. Well, I have other tools. Oh, gorgeous, that's great. Hi, Richard. Hey, Jeff, how are you doing? Great, thanks. I got my tools here, you let me know. 
So I got my digging tool here. Oh my god, what are you wearing? 3D glasses. Yet? I don't think we're gonna be able to use this. I think it's better that you put it all back in your bag and I'll give you the tools that you will be able to need. Okay, so what do you want me to do? Uh, Where should I get to? First, I want you to work on this area here. We will put some water on it. Oh, you can really see the difference now. If you will wait, it will dry a bit up and then it's easier to chip away the rock from the bone. So I, I want you to just uh, start digging with the chiseling here to, to this side. Okay. Well, I think you're giving me the really hard part. <laughs> Get on my glasses so I don't accidentally destroy anything. So here's a geologist hammer. Oh, I like that. I've got one of these. And here's a screwdriver. So just try and work in here and start uh, chiseling away. Okay. Richard, you seem extremely knowledgeable about all of this. Are you a paleontology grad student? No, well, actually, I'm just an amateur. Really? Me too. Okay, let's check out. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so how did you end up on this dig? Well, I had an internship with someone in the Netherlands who built uh, replicas of dinosaurs. And uh, during that internship, I got in touch with this museum. Told them that I wanted to be a participant on a dinosaur excavation. So now I uh, got the, this opportunity and I immediately uh, took it with my both hands, so... Uh, yeah. I think that's fantastic. Yeah. What happens if I break this bone? Well, if you break it, it's not an entirely disaster. Of, of course, we, do, we don't want it to happen, but if it does, we'll just give it to uh, Orsina. She is our preparator. Really? <laughs> you brought your own prep artist in the field in case I break this bone? Yes, it is. That's yes. brilliant. STEM journals, personal log. I've been collecting fossils my entire life, but I've never experienced anything like this. Are you the bone doctor? Uh, yeah, I am. <laughs> that is the first part of uh, the femur that uh, Richard is working on. Are you saying that Richard broke this huge bone? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is a natural crack here. Here in the field, the, the rough work is done. You extract the bones, you take off as much matrix as you can, and then they're wrapped carefully and shipped to Switzerland where the detailed prep work will be done in the lab. Exactly, yeah. What we do now is we cover it with, with tin foil and, uh, yeah, put afterwards the plaster on it. Yeah. Can I help? Yeah, of course. All right, so I think we're good here. We prepared that perfectly. Let's let's get the chips on. So, Jeff, after are you finished um, <laughs> the preparator assistant to chop? <laughs> what, what are you going to do next? Thomas promised that he's going to take me out in the field, and we're going to we're going to hunt part of the ranch looking for uh, bone fragments. Oh, might give us nice, a clue. nice, else to dig, yeah. yeah. Enjoy. I think my eyes are pretty well attuned, but how do you tell a dinosaur bone from, say? an ordinary piece of sandstone like this. Congratulations, you have already seen that this <laughs> is actually sandstone. Thank you, thank you. Now, the, the other thing is now you have to find the dinosaur bone. I will show you and then you will compare and you will train your eye and you will immediately see differences. A lot of tiny differences and you will memorize. Then you go on, oh, a second one. I need to find the first dinosaur bone fragment so then I can have that moment go, now I can find a million more. Sure, we start like this. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. Walk through and carefully watch. I mean, that's the basic thing. Carefully watch for indication of bones and we will certainly find. Carefully move and have a look. Yep. What's this? No, that's only a piece of stone. Yes! Yes! Yes, sir! <laughs> yes, sir! That's well, my well. first ever piece of dinosaur bone in my whole life! You can clearly here see this elongated structure. It's reddish, so a little bit pinkish reddish. And when you turn it eventually over, you can see here this, this dotted structure, spongy actually. So this is the so-called spongiosa of the bone. 
Now I think we have got the eye now, so we should search for more and bigger pieces. You think? Oh, yeah. Let's go and see. Okay. And you we, will learn. We need to find that first one so we, we can then find the million after Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Oh, holy cow, look at this, Thomas. Okay. <gasps> yeah. So you see. Now, this is when I regret leaving my rock pick back at camp. I thought, oh, I won't need my rock. Huh? Oh, oh, that's a beautiful look one. Look at that. A beautiful piece. That's amazing. I mean, there are better places out here, even not so far from here, so. You think there are sites much better than this out there, correct? Absolutely, not even far from here. Let's, Let's keep see. on hiking this All time. Right. Cyanobacteria from the stromatolite killed the beast. It's just like in War of the Worlds. Oh well, in a few million years we'll have another dinosaur fossil to dig up. Cheers. In Arizona, Svetlana Skolar is an astrobiologist studying methods to find traces of ancient life on Mars. And I'm joined by Andre, a young STEM investigator keen on exploration. As an astrobiologist, I'm interested in studying the prospect of life elsewhere. My research par particularly deals with the planet Mars. And what we know of Mars is that in the past, it used to be warmer, wetter, basically friendlier to the conditions of life as we know it. Today, it's a pretty cold and unpleasant and dry place, maybe negative 60 degrees Celsius on a sunny day. And if we wanted to find life on Mars, our best prospect would probably be to look for life in the past. Well, unfortunately, I don't have a time machine, so I can't go back and see if there was life in the past. But what I can do is I can study analog environments that preserve fossil traces of past life. So that's why analog environments are important. Specifically, stromatolites are an example of one of these kinds of environments. They preserve fossil traces of life. Speaking of which, don't you have some stromatolite samples for me? Oh, does he? He has been talking about this rock all day. And like, he won't even show me it. Like, I swear, he is obsessed with the rock. It's about as interesting as the dirt on Mars. Hey, this is a spectacular stromatolite sample that I personally collected in Wyoming. And I had it cut so that we could examine the exterior and the interior. Ooh, look at those layers. I have it on good authority, they're called laminations. Actually, stromatolites are laminated structures made of sediment, the lighter layers, and bacteria, cyanobacteria, the darker layers. I like to think of them as a high-rise condo where the cyanobacteria just want to get to the top, to the penthouse, because they're photosynthesizers. They want to be close to the sunlight so they can make their food and energy. And as they make their way up, they build these layered structures. Other inhabitants, the lower class citizens, colonize the regions in between and basically eat their leftovers. So how do you know that this top rock is a so-called penthouse and that the dark layer is bacteria versus the lighter layer is sediment? Well, that's what we're gonna go see in my lab. Let me show you. I'll tell you how we know. The stromatolite killed my pet dinosaur, Dino to Laurentis. <laughs> this is a Raman spectroscopy system. Raman spectroscopy works by bouncing laser light off the surface of your sample. We just put your sample in and we acquired this spectrum. So what did it tell you? Yeah, so we can see that we have several peaks right here. This peak, this peak, and this peak are actually traces of a mineral called calcite. So that's telling us about the sediment. And then these two right here are the biosignature that I'm looking for, the signature of life that tells us we have 
fossil carbon. So how do you know that these two peaks of carbon were once living organisms? That's only one piece of the puzzle. In 2020, NASA's gonna send a rover to Mars, and it's gonna have a Raman system, very similar to this one, looking for signatures of life, what we call biosignatures. And then those samples are gonna be put in a sample cache and then brought back to Earth later on. And then on Earth, we're gonna be able to determine where that carbon originated, whether it was carbon created by life or carbon delivered, for example, from a meteorite. What do you think of that, Andre? You'll be an old man by then. Before today, I always thought that paleontology was just digging up old bones and finding out what animals used to roam the Earth. But I realized it has a lot more to it, including planetary exploration. With that, scientists can discover animals that used to live on other planets and possibly discover more life forms. And I think this is very interesting, and I would definitely like to study it later on in life. STEM Journal's concluding entry. This journey has taught me that paleontology is a lot more than collecting fossils. It allows us to paint a picture of the world that was, not just the animals that roamed its surface, but also the plant life, climate, even the atmosphere. And my visit with an astrobiologist has made me wonder if paleontology will help us find traces of life on other worlds as well. As you've discovered, learning about paleontology is more than just looking through old bones. What you need to do now is really become proactive and passionate about your future education. Find places to get involved. Look online for activities, look at your local science center for resources and speakers that may be available, and even local places like the Pueblo Grand Museum and see what type of activities they have for students to be involved with paleontology.